Chairman Mike Smith and Commissioner Talena Matthews. We are also accompanied by several members of the PSC staff. They are Mayor Beth Purvis, Matthew Baer, Ben Bellamy, Andrew Melikovovic, and James Rhodes. Additionally, Kent Chandler from the Kentucky Attorney General's Office is here. We are here tonight to take public comments in case number 2017-00321, the application of Duke Energy Kentucky, Inc. for an adjustment of the electric rates, approval of an environmental compliance plan and surcharge mechanism, approval of new tariffs, approval of accounting practices to establish regulatory assets and liabilities, and all other required approvals and relief. If you were here for the earlier informational session, you heard about this rate application in greater detail and also received an explanation of how the PSC will go about in reaching a decision in this case. To reiterate what was explained earlier, the PSC is required to apply a fair, just, and reasonable standard in protecting the interest of both ratepayers and the utility within the scope of regulatory powers conferred upon it by the state legislature. What this basically means for investor-owned utilities such as Duke is that in exchange for providing reliable electricity at a fair price, they are permitted the opportunity to earn a fair rate of return on their investment. Emphasis is on opportunity. The Commission does not guarantee any rate of return for any utility. It's the PSC's responsibility to ensure that the cost a utility prevents, presents for inclusion in their electric rates are fair, just, and reasonable to the ratepayer. However, by a legislated statute, we cannot arbitrarily deny a utility from recouping those legitimately incurred costs. We also do not have the authority to adjust rates on the basis of economic hardship, or other social or environmental factors present in a utility's service territory. If you missed the earlier presentation, I would recommend you view it online at the PSC website, pscky.gov, for a more in-depth explanation. Let me also remind you that it was stated earlier, the Duke Energy Rate case currently before the PSC does not involve either the deployment of advanced meters, also known as smart meters, or the opt-out fees that Duke Energy charges to customers who do not wish to have those meters installed. Both those issues were fully investigated and decided by the PSC in a proceeding last year and are not being reconsidered in connection with the current rate case. We understand that any matter affecting electric rates is likely to produce strong and differing opinions. We trust that everyone here this evening will present their comments in a respectful manner and to respect the right of everyone to be heard. With that being said, let me explain how we will proceed for the remainder of this event. We are here to listen to the public, but not to take or answer questions. Allowing questions and answers on the record as part of this meeting creates a potential for procedural problems later in the process. Therefore, there will be no presentations by Duke Energy or any of the other parties to the case nor will there be any question and answer period involving the parties. The Commission will be taking sworn testimony from them in a forthcoming evidentiary hearing. However, representatives of Duke Energy have agreed to remain at the conclusion of public comments to meet informally with anyone who has any questions they wish the company to address. This is an opportunity for Duke Energy's customers to have their voices heard. Those of you wishing to speak should have indicated your intention to do so when you signed in this evening. If you have not signed in, please do so, whether or not you intend to speak, so that we may have a complete record of this proceeding. Based on the number of people who have indicated a desire to speak, we are going to limit comments to five minutes per speaker so that everyone has an opportunity to be heard. Our timekeeper will signal you when you have a minute remaining by holding up a yellow card, and again when your time is up by holding up a red card. Please be respectful to others and do not disregard the timekeeper when they signal your time has expired. Those of you who do not wish to speak may submit comments in writing. We have comment forms available for that purpose and those may be turned in tonight to a member of the PSC staff or mailed or faxed to the PSC. The address and phone number are on the forms. You may also submit comments by email through the PSC website, psc.ky.gov. 
As you can see, this meeting is being videotaped and the tape will be available for public viewing on the PSC website. A summary of the public comments received tonight will be prepared for the PSC as part of the case record and made available on the website. All written comments will also be entered into the case record. If you later decide you would like to submit written comments, they will be accepted through the date of the formal evidentiary hearing in this case. That hearing, during which Duke Energy and other parties will present their cases to the PSC and be subject to cross-examination, is scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Tuesday, March 6th at the PSC offices, 211 Sauer Boulevard in Frankfurt, and may last several days. The hearing is open to the public and will be streamed live on the PSC website, psc.ky.gov. Three important things to keep in mind before we begin. Because the commissioners must rule on the Duke Energy application, we cannot answer questions pertaining to the substance of the case. However, questions you raise during this meeting may well be of assistance to the PSC and staff as we prepare for the evidentiary hearing. And PSC staff will be available after the public comments are concluded to answer any questions you may have regarding procedural matters in this case. The PSC has jurisdiction only over the rates and services of utilities. We have no jurisdiction over matters such as environmental standards or public health. Those are regulated by a number of federal, state, and local agencies. Therefore, the most helpful comments are those that directly address the merits of the Duke Energy proposal with respect to the size and structure of the requested rate adjustment and the reasons for the adjustment. If you have concerns or questions about service or billing for individual accounts, and the most effective way to have those addressed is to speak with a member of the PSC staff after this meeting or call our toll-free consumer hotline 800-772-4636 during regular business hours. When you come up to speak, please state your name and place of residence, and again, Please keep your comments to the allocated time so that others may have an opportunity to address the commission. So first of all, we'd like to start, are there any elected officials that would like to speak? Okay, that being said, uh, we're gonna start with, right here? Are you signed up to speak? We'll, let, we'll go in order then if you're signing up as an individual. So, we, yes ma'am? Are you speaking as an elected official? Then I, I would appreciate the, since we have the list in the order that people signed up to respect everyone that came in the order that they came, we will call them in the order that they came. Thank you. So first on the list is Daryl Cavendish. He, he left, okay. Clayton Campbell. Yes, sir, could you please state your name and address? I, I, think, there's a, I think there's a mic right up here, so yes, please. Full address, correct? Or uh, your name and your place of residence. I mean, place of residence. Okay. Uh, my name is Clayton Campbell. Um, I live in Union, Kentucky. Okay. That's good. Um, my comment is simply that uh, you know I did some quick research prior to, to coming into this meeting, and um, I gained a lot of useful information tonight that I wasn't necessarily aware of with the way that the, this body functions, and that there's a, an opportunity for the uh, the shareholders to. Um, earn a return on their on their investment. Um, but uh, really the information that I gained tonight just sort of sought to further uh, solidify my previous opinion on the matter, which was that it seems that Duke Energy is already sufficiently profitable um, and that the shareholders are already earning a pretty substantial uh, return on their investment. Um, Someone had mentioned, or someone had asked earlier for the, the figure, the, the uh, gray haired gentleman here, asked me um, what the compensation was for the, the CEO of Duke Energy uh, earlier this evening, which I had brought with me. It was $13,700,000 uh, for fiscal year 2017, so that 
sounds like they must be pretty profitable. Um, as well as the, uh, the net income for Duke Energy Corporation, which is an entity's income minus cost of goods sold, expenses, and taxes for an accounting period, was $2.17 billion in 2016. So if, they, if they've already, that's profit. That's not revenue. That's not, you know, just the big number that a lot of things get taken out of. They profited $2.17 billion in 2016. And, uh, you know, I'd just like to say for myself and for my further, or excuse me, my uh, other citizens here of Northern Kentucky that uh, I, I just, I think that's enough. So. Thank you. Thank you. Helen Lebitsky. My name is Helen Lebitsky. I reside in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. And, um, you know, just from the information I've read, you know, I just think that, you know, raising our rates that high is just really ridiculous considering, you know, like the gentleman said, the uh, profit the Duke is already making. And I won't be wasting your time tonight. I will be taking my uh, information a different route because I came here to talk about smart meters and you're not interested in listening to that and you never consulted us uh, before you approved them. So you will be hearing from me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Georgette Nordlow. I'm Georgette Nordlow from Erlanger. Um, I went and heard Duke Energy uh, presentation at a meeting once, and they just recently, and they made somebody made the comment. Uh, I guess our rates will go down because of all smart the reader meters that are going to meter readers. That was right. Um, are going to lose their jobs, so therefore there should be savings. Well. The response back from Duke was, nobody's lost their job from these smart meters. I don't understand how that makes fiscal sense. How can they, how could they keep somebody as smart meter read, as, as reader meters if they don't need meters read? So what, what are they doing, getting, giving out free money? Letting these people, I don't understand, where do they place them? I think that needs to be looked at as to, why are the meter readers not out of a job? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Leanne Moose.
yes, it's every seems to be every 15 years or so, but that seems like right now, the day that was presented, we're paying for a storm that happened in 2008. I would have rather paid for that storm in 2008 or 2009 because I'm quite sure the costs of that have been carried over or carried over to they've increased. But my main point is, I, I just think posting the recommendations and what was the key point that made you make the decision you made uh, on your website would be very good. Thank you. Thank you. We don't normally comment, but I would suggest that um, if possible, you attend the evidentiary hearing or you watch it because that's where all the evidence comes forth and how the decision is rendered. Rita Darrington. My name is Rita Darrington. I'm from Taylor Mill. I'm just really confused now because it said Duke Energy, so I thought I was going to be able to talk to Duke Energy, and you guys don't, you aren't Duke Energy. They'll be here after the meeting. I have things to do. Um, I've worked for a company already for 30 years, and never in my 30 years was I given a 15% raise. We got like 2 and 3%. So all these people here, we're, we're not the wealthiest people in the world, and I don't know how Duke expects to raise it that high and expect us to pay it. And the thing I'm really confused about is I just got my um, smart meter this month, and my bill went, I'm the only one there. My bill went, and I keep it at 60, I'm freezing. I went from $114 to $263 with this meter. I don't trust it, I don't believe it. I need proof, I mean, I don't understand if, if, if that wasn't the 15% increase, what in God's name is my bill going to be with the 15% increase? I'm not going to stay in the state of Kentucky and pay four or $500 heating bills. I will move. I will go somewhere else. I'm not doing it. Thank you. Rhett Frambies. So I'm piggybacking. I know you guys said that you're not here to talk about the smart meters and that decision was made, but I think what I what I would like everybody here to do, if you've had a have a smart meter installed like I did that I just did, to call them and say you need to reevaluate. Like you made the decision to have them installed, but now we're seeing the ramifications of what's going on when they're installed. So I want to just take a minute. I started. I live at 170 Lookout Farm in Crestview Hills. It's an old Dree subdivision. The houses were built in the mid 80s, mid to late 80s. My particular house, the roof, roof, HVAC, and windows are all less than two years old. So the rolling 12-month average of kilowatt hour usage at my house over the last 12 years was about 2,100 kilowatt hours. Last, the last bill I got that wasn't sky high was around 19, 1980 we used. They billed us for over 4,000 kilowatt hours last month. So our bill went from $183 from the, the month before to over $400. So we have a Facebook community, uh, a private community that where I posted and I started saying, hey, did anybody get their bill yet? And there are some people back there that don't have the smart meters, but everybody that has got their first bill with the smart meter um, has responded. Same with me. I called a couple of weeks ago. This bill will be higher than we have had in the whole 23 years that we've been here. It is more than double the highest bill we have ever had in this community in the, the time that we have lived here. Um, I have another, uh, this, this lady lives three doors down from me. Her bill was $531.42 from December 22nd to January 26th. And she said, I feel violated. Interesting. Um, another one, there's another one on here. I've lived here 23 years. This is more than double the, the highest bill that we've ever had. Um, 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 
There's another one on here. Um, you, you get the point. It goes on and on. Then I took it to a, my public Facebook, to so all my friends. Um, one, of the, one of the gentlemen that lives out in Florence that just had his installed um, posted a graph of the last five years he's lived there. Um, and he said, can you guess when the smart meter was installed and the graph was like this? And at the very end, it just shot straight up. It was more than $150 more than the highest bill that he ever received, which was back in 2013. And I know the gentleman that spoke earlier about the weather when I, when I challenged, because they say it's weather and these meters are more accurate. So in January of 2016, the average temperature in Cincinnati was 23 degrees, okay? In December, this cold month, it was 25 degrees. So there's correlation with skyrocketing bills and the smart meter. The other thing that I had an issue with is I was never informed that they were even doing this. And the four times I called Duke to talk about this bill, nobody, until I called the commission, nobody ever told me that I had the option to opt out and pay a fee. And now because they switched it, they want to charge me another $100 to go back to the old meter. So b before they consider any kind of rate increases in the PSC, why don't we look at that? Because they're going to get more than their 15% with these meters. So please call. Janice Cushing. Caldwell. Gosh, so much, so little time. Um, there are screens, shields that they sell on the internet. These smart meters are dangerous. They are dangerous. There are going to be lawsuits. People are going to be getting cancer. We're going to be having tumors. I mean, the power of this beam to shoot through the air through your homes, through your children, through your neighbors, through your dogs, and everybody's got one, so you can't go anywhere without getting this stuff shot through you. Look on the internet, there, there are actually shields that they're producing to protect you from these rays. If you can imagine how powerful it must be to send the signal through the air, number one. Uh, two, handling fees, management fees. Did you notice how quickly that was glossed over? Anybody raise of hands real quick. How quickly was that handling fee, management fee lost over? You know, through our tax dollars, we supplement, we help. We don't want anyone freezing, okay? But that's going up, skyrocketing. Look at your management fee and handling fee. And he glossed over it really quickly. But that's going to be going crazy high. And it's, I wonder who gas electric bill I'm paying. Do you? Because it sure isn't our bills. Somebody else. Um, December, all my Christmas lights, all the comings and goings with door open, Christmas presents, everything else, my bill was $215. The one through the end of December with no Christmas lights after the first of the, after Christmas time, they were all gone. Through the end of January, it was $454. If you guys think that we're lying, 
We're not making this up. Okay? And that is what they're using as a basis for the increase, I believe, from what was said. Or is it the forecast from those months? I don't know. What rate is going to be increased by 17%? Which, where, which one is going to be increased? The old one? A year ago? A month ago? Which one? I don't know. Do, do any of you know where the 17.5% starts? Was it your rate in December of last year? Or this year? Or when? I think we need to know a starting period. Do you know? So they increased them, so it's nice and high. And they increased the high rates, another 17.5%. Uh, let's get this law changed. Let's get the law changed. Round of applause, please. I want my choice in electric. I want my choice in gas. I want my choice in cable. I want my choice in phones. I want my choice everywhere. Donald Trump has taken out the regulations. He's taken out we're fracking. We've got our own coal right here in Kentucky. There's no reason why this is being increased. Zero. Fourteen million dollars. How many people underneath her are making ten? How many people underneath them are making five? How many people under them are making four? Right? Throughout the whole place, it all goes down. Who's paying for it? We are. It's over with. You guys, we got to change this law now. I want Owen Electric. I want solar power on my roof. I don't think we're allowed to even do that anymore. God bless everybody. God bless Donald Trump. <laughs> Kathleen Frambies. Sorry, is Kath, she left? Thank you. Gary Webster. Adam Finar. Robinson.
because you don't know the two major items that are going to affect everybody's rates. So I ask that you delay this decision until you get some facts six months or a year from now about what the smart meters are going to people's usage and then what the tax issues are going to cause for Duke to, as far as helping out Duke in their uh, property. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Hunter. Uh, Mark Hunter from Independence, Kentucky. Really, uh, what has been shared before covered quite a bit. 17% increase is not acceptable. It's just not acceptable. I'm speaking for my neighbors. I'm speaking for all the people who didn't know about this meeting, who didn't come here because they didn't know about it. So we're standing in the gap for them. 17% is outrageous for a, a, a electric hike. My house is 100% electric. I get these graphs and charts mailed to me every month. <coughs> showing how high my electric bill is compared to all my neighbors. And heck, I don't know that my neighbors may be on gas for, for their heat source. I don't know. Uh, but I work from home. I've got electric on all the time. I don't know about you, but I like to have a comfortable home when I'm working there. I don't, it doesn't have to be super comfortable, but good Lord, you know, I'm paying for the electric. A 17% increase is, is crazy. When the CEO is making $13 million, Kentucky's coal is on the rise again, and the number one source of producing electricity in Kentucky is coal. coal. So it doesn't make sense to have a 17% increase in our electric bill and then, just touching on the smart meters, I'm sitting working with my wife, trying to operate my small business. We're trying to make ends meet. We're living check to check like most of America. We've got debt like most of America. We don't have big income. 17% is going to really hurt. Property valuation in my neighborhood skyrocketed this year, went up 30%. Now, you know, somebody that has a lot of money, so what? Thank God your property value went up. That's good, okay? I'm going to have to pay property tax on that 30% increase. Add that to the 17% increase in our electric bill. Add that to the increase in the sanitation bill. Add that to the, the taxes that will probably be going up because of our $85 billion underfunded pension. How is that going to be paid for? So can you understand why we're passionate tonight? We're angry. We're angry at the 17%. So I guess that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. Annette Doobie. No Annette Doobie. Arlene Luby? Arlene Luby? Janine Bell Smith. Sorry, Janine Bell Smith. I live in Crescent Springs, Kentucky. And my big concern was this for the smart meters. So are you telling me that we cannot make any statements regarding the smart meters? This hearing isn't about smart That's meters. That's what I correct. We would like to, we would, we, if I might say, we would like to be, have the opt-out information removed of $25 for, uh, they have my meter. I have an arm meter, which is an automatic read. Where they come by and they just zap it, and they pull down the street. We'd like to have that removed. Um, also, I am a Duke Energy stockholder. 
I bought Duke Energy at $15 per stock. I have, I'm now, of course, it's fluctuating with this market that's up and down. I now, I now have at one point, it went up to $97. So I am a rate, I, and then when Duke Energy basically merged with Progress Energy, didn't that make them the basically large provider of gas and electric throughout the United States of America? And would they be in violation of an antitrust law? Yes. yes. Also, I've, I've, I've done a lot of work and done a lot of research. I've talked with Andrew many times. I've talked to some of your staff members. You have 67 staff members working for the PSC. You work for us, and we pay your salaries. And so as we stand here concerned about having to pay these ungodly rates for our, get for our electric, but also the, the, the uh, smart, meters, smart meters are connected to the gas meters, and they, they com commute back and forth. And so we would like to have that removed. Um, something else that I, I have a lot of information from the uh, papers. Uh, Duke Energy Company got a tax cut. Will your bill reflect it? Taxpayers get hosed on Duke Energy wind farm, buying spree, and the Public Service Commission approves Duke Energy solar power projects. And I think we have three, and we have like, like two in Crittenden and maybe one in Walton. And um, Duke Energy is also to pay a fine over power plant violations. Are we still paying for that? For the Dan River? Um, I've got cost of energy efficiency programs to Duke Energy Progress customers in South Carolina increased January of 2017. And of course, I have all the, the filings that have been put in by Kroger, and I'm hoping to attend to, our, to, to the hearings and hear the evidentiary hearing and hear the meetings of what's going on in Frankfurt. But I would like to suggest that you cease and desist with the smart meters and the $25 opt-out and also the 17.1% four-point increase. And we can't afford it. We're not wealthy up here. We can't afford it. I still have my old meter. My bill was, was very much in line with what it usually is. And I have another question, too. You can purchase these smart meter covers. Are we permitted by Duke? And this is probably a question that Duke Energy, I've never asked them yet. I've talked with Roscoe. Can we actually put a smart meter cover on top of our smart meters to protect our health? I can continue, but uh, I've probably gone over my time. Well, we would tell you. Hold up the well, I know you can't answer the questions, but I guess my, I would like to see these smart meters programs cease to desist. We don't want the smart meters. We don't want the smart meter technology because I see these things as big brothers spying on us. They're going to know exactly when you, when, you use your, when you use your electric, what time of the day, when you use it. And then we'll, we'll be basically, our rates will be raised according to how much we use at any given time of day. But I think it's TOD, time of day, time of usage. And if people consider that, we do not be okay and an increase. I don't think we can even afford 2%. Thank you. Thank you. Again, please keep in mind, there are PSC staff here to answer questions. There are Duke Power people here. Could the Duke Power people please stand up so the people know who you are? Thank you. And we also have someone from the Attorney General's office. Kent, could you wave your hand? Thank you. So there are, we can't answer questions because it would destroy the process. But there are people here that if you want to ask questions to that are more than happy to hear what you have to say and try to get you an answer. So hopefully you can find out some of the answers that you're looking for tonight or at least a source of those that can answer the questions maybe and get back to you. Uh, Jesse Brewer. Jesse Brewer, Florence, Kentucky. And I just want to bring up a couple points I hope you guys consider when you guys have your hearing in a couple months. Made some notes here. 
as I was listening along the, uh, we'll call it a presentation. Uh, I'm a small business owner. Uh, my pro I run rental property, that's my business. And a lot of people that I rent to are seniors that are on fixed incomes. And so here in this area, we've experienced cost increase with the 911 dwelling fee. My sanitation rates have gone up. Uh, my insurance costs have gone up. They say my property is worth more than what it was, so my taxes have gone up. And now my dupe's going to go up because it's a lot of these properties I pay the heat on, or the seniors pay the heat on if it's a smaller unit, 17, 18%. Who's going to pay that? Do you think, as a small business owner, I have to pass this cost back on to the seniors, and I don't want to, but I have to pass this cost back on, but their Social Security isn't going to go up to cover these costs. Their retirement is not going to go up to cover these costs. So where's the money going to come from? It's, there's no one here to get it from. So I hope you really consider that and take care of those people. And the last thing I got for you is, when I first started my own business, my dad said, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Slaughter this Duke Energy hog. Thank you. Ketter and Sullivan. Kentucky. Uh, thanks for giving us this opportunity to speak to you and hopefully influence you in the right direction. <laughs> well, uh, I venture to say most of the people in this room are either on a fixed income or they work for an employer that doesn't give raises or they work for an employer that only gives three to four percent raises yearly. And sometimes there's mixes. One year you get a raise, the next year you don't. And I, I call me naive, but I do understand everyone wants their dollar. But they're asking for $49.6 million of revenue. They're not asking to survive. They're asking for us to pay for their investments. $49.6 million revenue is just ridiculous. Simply ridiculous. So I just hope that you understand that we really can't afford this much. Um, someone asked for incremental rate hikes and we were advised that it costs $400,000 a year to run the uh, test to, to come up with these dollar amounts. And I say that's nonsense. You know the computer's doing all the work. They already have the logarithms to calculate what, they, what they're doing. So it can't possibly cost $400,000 every time they want to analyze to do a rate hike. It, you know, maybe a 2% rate hike, maybe 3%, maybe across a couple of years, but this amount at one time is just entirely too much, too much. And, and no, one, no one's even mentioned it. Besides all the other areas getting their dollar, there's also health care costs and prescription costs, which are continually on the rise. I'm paying a lot more than I did last year for health care, and I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. Working two jobs, my husband's on disability. It's, this is just too much, just too much. Thank you. Thank you. Raymond Sharp. She carries the weight. I'm on disability. I have a lot of expensive uh, medication. 
and we do pay the electric before my a lot my money. Seventeen percent. I think it, it just don't stink. It's putrid. The money that you guys are reeling in is just sinful. It's it's gluttonism. We it should just be. We should have a vote on it. Let us have a vote. Let us have our words. All we want is a vote, and then see how it turns out from there. Doug Massey. Could you come up here, please? Thank you. When you guys come up here, hold the mic right up to your mouth because we can't hear you unless you're doing this. Right here. Okay? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to say, can, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, there was an article in the paper about a month ago, and I just wrote down some of the instances with Donald Trump's tax cut. And it went on to say, obviously, about the uh, bonus checks and raises people. Then it went on to report all the electric companies across the United States that were getting one-time rebates or cost reductions all across the United States. And I just wrote down a few examples I wanted to share with you. And a couple of them even involved Duke. And the first one was Duke Energy of Florida and St. Pete. Their original goal was to $513 million from Hurricane Irma. Well, when Donald Trump gave them the tax cut, they rescinded the tax increase, and they wanted it to go to 520 per kilowatt hour. And they, over a three month period, the bills would increase 187 per 20, which I think when they did the clicker, I think ours was like 169 over a three month period. But they rescinded the tax increase or the rate increase because of the tax reduction they get on their business. Duke Energy of North Carolina submitted for a rate increase. They rescinded it due to the new tax code. Um, another uh, Dominion Electric is in North Carolina. They're one of Duke's competitors. They gave their customers a $1,000 rebate here in a one-time credit 7% de decrease on our monthly bill. Um, Detroit Electric. They passed along a savings of $190 million to their customers. Baltimore Gas and Electric, $82 million worth of tax savings resulted in lower gas and electric bills for their customers. And of course, all of these are based on the approval from the PSC, PUCO, and there's many more. And then there was about 25 to 30 companies that did request rate increase these, this year for the coming year like Duke. But because of the new tax code, they all rescinded their request. And I don't know why Duke can't do the same thing. Um, Attorney General Andy Bashar said that, you know, in his estimation, that if anything, Duke should reduce rates and give to the customers $16 million, $16 million back. Uh, if, if that's low or high, I'm not sure. But with all these examples in the Duke Energy in Florida and North Carolina, the trial, I mean, especially in Tampa, Hurricane Irma, they were trying to recoup almost a half billion, a little bit more than a half billion dollars. They've done away with that. And another thing I'd just like to point out, and I don't want to make it personal, because in a way it's not, but then again it is, because the, the increase or anything like that comes out of our pocket. But when the gentleman was up here earlier, and he had the thing going down the river, and one of the things for recoupment costs was customer service, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I would just like to point out 
He replaced three of my telephone, three telephone poles on my street with a cul-de-sac. The contractor came over to me and pointed out, he says, you know, right there on your uh, weather guard, your neighbor's tree, if you call to the 800 number, they will come out and they will you know, cut the branches back away from your weather guard. And you know, it's a, it's a hazard. I said, okay. I called him on July 27th. I called him over a three month, two week period. Never did receive a call back. Finally, on about November 2nd, I called him and I said, I have not gotten any. They had it noted. It's in their books. It's in their recordings. They had it. And they said, they, I guess finally with me being irate, the guy called me back the following Monday. He said, you know, I'm sorry about this. He said, we dropped the ball. But he asked me, he said, did they come out and you know, trim the branches? And I said, no. So I had to get a neighbor to do it, and I paid him for it to get up on my roof and cut the branches. I said, dude, could have came out with a boom, raised it up, because my driveway would fit right there to it. It would have took him 15 minutes tops. So I would just like to say, I agree with Andy Bashar. Please don't let Duke, you know, they, they got their gift and they got their tax cut this year. Yeah, that's an early Christmas present. And don't let them make money off the backs of our less hardworking people. <laughs> Mark Walter. Dara McDowell. Um, I'm trying, I'm, I'm actually running for uh, city commissioner and um, I'm one of those people that think normal people should run for office. And so I'm a normal person. I don't have a business card, I don't have a website, but you know, after coming here tonight, I think people need, we need people like me and I hope more of us all rise up because we all need to serve in office or we're going to end up with this kind of stuff. Nothing against you. I understand that you're sticking with the statutes, but um, if more of us were in office, the statute wouldn't exist in the first place. Thank you. Mike Welling.
promote all this stuff, our taxpayer dollars going into Duke that uh, they, they, they wind up wasting uh, all those tax dollars to keep the environmentalists happy. And I, I'm just curious as to when's this going to start coming back instead of rates going up that they start going down now that the uh, clean coal is, is going to be introduced and hopefully some of these plants can be reopened that the uh, EPA shut down along the Ohio River. It's, I, I, I can't even imagine where we're getting our electricity now with all the plants that have been shut down. And uh, uh, I just hope that we get some answers through all this and we'll follow it. Thank you very much. Galen Bridges. Uh, member, members of the commission, thank you all for coming out tonight and listening to us. I know this is a thankless job. I try to stay on point, and I recognize that you are our line of defense against Duke, so we appreciate you. Any help that you can give us. I want to talk about two points. One, this rate increase was uh, submitted in September while the tax bill was still just a gleam in Donald Trump's eye. There's no way that they could have anticipated it. The stock market went back and forth. Would it be passed? Would it not be passed? They couldn't repeal health care, so could they pass the tax cut or not? There's no way the tax bill could have been anticipated in this September rate increase. It was passed in late December up until the last few days. The different uh, versions didn't know what rate would be. Wound up being cutting the corporate rate from 35 to 21 percent. That's a 14 percent increase. And if they make 100 million dollars and have to pay 35 million in tax, now they only got to pay 21 million in tax. 14 percent increase on their bottom line. They're asking for a 15 percent rate increase. That's about a wash. And there's no way that that could have been anticipated in this rate increase. And, and as the other gentleman pointed out about the other utilities that are passing it on to their, to their consumers and all. You all need to t take a look at how much of that, th that's, that's, that Donald Trump's given them their, their return on their equity that they hadn't anticipated, 14% right there. Um, it's going to have a major impact on their, on their earnings. Uh, I want to zero in on a little minute part of it. I understand from reading this, what I read in the paper, that they're going to raise the minimum meter rate from about $5 to $15. They're going to triple it. And that means if you're not using it, you go from $5 to $15. I have, I'm a farmer in Independence. I have three barns. I have a meter. I have to have, they're spaced out. I have to have a meter on each barn. Some months I don't use it at all. Some months, it's three months before I use it, but it's awful nice, to, nice convenience to plug in my tractor in these cold winter months, plug in my diesel so I can feed my cows, flick on the lights at night if I need to once a month. Five bucks a month, fair, fair enough. It's going to $15 per barn, per meter. It's going to run the farmers out, uh, people that have a little shed or uh, something that they don't use much. You, it, it's going to also have rental property. A lot of times when you get the rental property done, you leave the electric on because for the convenience of the tenant or if they want to show it and you don't have hardly any usage. They're tripling that rate. Unfortunately for me, I have a mobile home park also and I have a lot of empty mobile homes, dozens. I have the electric on there. And it's five dollars a month. Some of them we rarely use, but if we have to, you know, have a sewer break and we have to have plug in the machine, we have a home nearby, we can do it. If we want to work on one, we can do it. They're tripling it when you don't use anything. How can you conserve if you if you don't you can't cut your usage from zero? And you know, with the smart meters, I swore I wasn't going to say smart meters, but with the smart meters, the cost of a meter itself should not be that much. So if they could do it for $5 a month and they got the smart meters, just having a meter shouldn't triple. 
and you know older people raising their base rate they can't conserve their if they're hardly using any now that you can't conserve and cut your bill they, they've cut the disincentive to conserve I think everybody agrees we should be cutting uh, energy use um, maybe the cost of electric generation has gone up and uh, they are entitled to recover that cost they're entitled to make a profit but I'll submit that the cost of not generating electric has probably stayed the same, zero. So why are they raising the rate on somebody that doesn't use any or hardly any? Um, so it, it's the electric company, it's not the electric meter company. So they should charge for using the electric, not for having a meter. I, I know they have to have it have a meter, there's a cost of the meter, there's a cost to send out the bill, okay, and uh, that, that should not triple. So I'd ask you to look at that little section of it, that that's going to be a burden on, on some of us. Thank you. Thank you. Norma Ryle. giving me the opportunity to speak. I just heard about this. About how the customers of utilities I was so happy because I live in an old farmhouse out there on Big Bone. And a few years ago, when the oil was through the roof, the cost of it, I had Duke Energy out there who gave, a consultant gave the advice to put in electric. I can tell you, I close off the house now. I burn the wood down. Because of the rates of an old farmhouse. Now, there's a lot of renters, young people, old construction in this county. And I cannot imagine how they will pay their bills. I'll survive. I always. Now the other thing is, is um, where did they come up with 15 percent? Now I read some place that we're in Eastern Kentucky, the power uh, companies raise the rates. The poorest place in Kentucky, of which my roots go back. Well, my heart aches for them. And to see that the energy companies are doing the same thing up here without informing the public. Now, I suggest a couple things. First, that an independent auditor go in and take a look at those corporate balance sheets and see where they can be a little more efficient. And the same thing goes for the commission in Kentucky, which I'm sorry I wasn't familiar with even your organization or our government. But at some time, the monopoly. Why can't you choose of an electric company when one electric is all around me? There's several other companies. But I am pigeonholed into where I have no Thank you for taking a look at this. And I hope Duke's executives will seriously look at it and find some way that they can um, probably find other ways to achieve their corporate plans. Thank you. Thank you. Jeannie Schroer. Jeannie Schroer. That's the last of the people that have signed up to speak. Is there anyone else? Please come forward, sir. Let's say your name. And My name is Rick Dames. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you can hear me, can't you? I, I'm an engineer. I was forced into retirement due to an injury, a workers' comp case. I've worked some 45 years in the engineering field, 35 of them was in helping people save energy and manage your buildings. Um, I know hold a number of competency-based uh, certifications in energy management. I know what I need to do to my house to make it better, but I don't have the money to do it. Uh, that's my problem, not yours. I understand you don't deal with social issues, and you're not here to deal with the smart meter, but I will make the reference that I would have opted out, knowing some of the dangers that I've read about, uh, of somebody being able to check on me all the time, <clears throat> big brother. But $25 a month, not to have a smart meter, didn't work in our budget. Okay, so I don't know how this rate increase, and Mr. Hunter, my friend here, did touch on the fact that taxes and that will be going up to, for them to compensate. The whole cost of living in the area is going to go up because of that. And for those of us on fixed incomes, Social Security, pensions, and some investments, IRAs and that, that's still going to be tough to absorb. Now, I was born and raised in this area, and in 93 moved to North Carolina, and where we moved to was served by Duke. At that time when we moved, it was Cincinnati Gas and Electric up here. Uh, what it really, I saw an increase in our cost of living, which I was aware of going in. I also, for 20 years of the, I mean, for 10 of the 13 years I was there, was managing buildings for the county where Winston-Salem is. So I was aware of the rates and these bills and all these rates and all the different things that they tack on are hard to understand if you don't work with them all the time. I used to understand them. I, I won't tell you I do anymore because I haven't worked with them for three years. When I moved back here to be near family, again, social issue you don't have to deal with. But then I find out all of a sudden Duke's coming up here to take over cg and &E, and economies of scale, I understand. But by the way, our rates start going up. And I know the KWH charge was more because I knew what it was when I moved down there because they're working with commercial and institu or institutional customers here and trying to help them save energy and reduce their energy bills. And that was the same thing I originally moved down here. And then all of a sudden I find myself managing these 56 county buildings around the city of Winston-Salem and trying to figure out how to save energy there. And part of it was based on higher KWH rates. I hope you, I, I also happen to realize, because I was uh, on an on advisory committee on energy here in the state of Kentucky, and one of the people that uh, uh, helped set what they're going to ask you for, he, he admitted. They always ask for more than they know they're going to get. So I don't doubt that maybe the 17.4%, hopefully, is not what's going to come through. But they're still going to get a pretty good chunk of change, and it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt especially those of us, the small businesses, and, and the big ones, the curlers. I understand why they're, they're, they always are supposedly operating on a very small profit margin and for their energy costs to go up. I also know who does their engineering locally here, and that's a big part of their bill to do business. So our cost of food's going to go up. So we're, Mark touched on it, but we're going to see it across the board that not only do our energy costs go up, but because everybody else's energy costs are going to go up, taxes, cost of food, cost of clothing, cost to go to Lowe's or Home Depot, all this stuff is all going to go up, and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. I understand they need to get some. I've got investments. I want return on it. That's going to help me through retirement. But I just, it, they're not 10%. I've got a darn good financial advisor down in Greensboro, North Carolina still. But it's, he worked hard to get 10%. We're going to forget it, 8 or 9. So I just hope you really consider what this is going to do, even though I know you're not supposed to deal with the social issues. There are a number of us, seniors, near seniors, near retirement, are already there. My, my mother in last 93. That's going to hurt her, because she's on a real low Social Security. I just hope you consider some of this factor, what it's going to do to the cost of living here, because that's also going to affect development in this area. Because the cost of living is going to get too high and people aren't going to uh, relocate here. And that's all i got to say. Thank you. And thank you for coming and hearing us out. Sir, could you do me one favor and state your name one more time? Rick Dames. That's D-A-M-E-S. Thank you. Is there
there anybody else who would like to speak? Last chance. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight and for sharing your views with the PSC. Thank you also for the respect and courtesy of you have shown. As I announced earlier, the PSC staff, Duke Energy representatives, and the Attorney General representative will now be available to meet informally to answer whatever questions you may have. Thank you and good night.